This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is inflation in today's housing market. But before we get started, hey, I want to touch base with you guys and just uh, see how you're doing. Hopefully, uh, you're doing okay out there, man, oh, man. I'll tell you, this is, uh, talk about inflation. Gosh, have you been to the gas pumps lately? Been crazy. But hey, I'm not here to get you depressed. I'm here to encourage you. So um, I'm hoping that uh, uh, at least the content we've been providing, I've I, been really blessed to have some great guests on recently and if you've missed any of those shows um, I really recommend that you uh, check them out there is a great show coming up this Monday too which is a, a part two of a great interview with the guy named uh, Van Spurgeon just a lot of good stuff in there for beginners all the way up to you know experienced uh, investors that have years years of experience behind them um, investing in properties, whether single family or multifamily. But uh, anyway, just trying to provide you with great content here. Let's jump into tip of the week, Google mapping for dollars. Now, knowing a market means you have a good understanding of that place that you're investing. I mean, you really need to know your market well. And uh, there's something that we've talked about on this show and a lot of our guests have mentioned too called driving for dollars. Well, if you are fortunate enough to live close by to the areas that you invest in, this is a great way to find deals. Just driving up and down streets, up and down neighborhoods. It's also a great way to get to know your market. Um, but for those of us that are out of state or maybe just too busy to get out there to do this, um, you can do this through Google Maps just by t typing in, you know, a s Google search, a Google Maps, and you'll, you'll be able to find a map. And then you type in the address or the, you know, something in that area that you're interested in investigating and learning more about uh, so that you can get an aerial view of that particular market. Now, the, you know, the great thing is, is you can look at it from sort of a map, a standard map view. And, and that's kind of good because you can scan and look for key businesses in the area that it tells a lot if you can see uh, you know things like a whole foods there and panera and things like this you're going to know that it's it's catering to that market is catering to a you know higher income uh, level of uh, person that would be a tenant in your your property but um, you can also click on what it'll say like a, a um, like a neighborhood view or um um Gosh, you know, just just clicking on that uh, little, uh, there's like a little box in the corner you'll see, and and it, it gives you a real life view of that neighborhood. And if you click on it, it it'll take you to a front view of that home or that property you're looking at. And um, you know, it's kind of cool because you can see you know what the neighborhood looks like, what some of the other uh, 
property in that area looks like. But then you can use it to really scroll up and down streets and you can look for all kinds of other things. Um, you can look at, uh, you know, what is what does the neighborhood look like? Um, what are, uh, you know, people have cars on their front lawn? Um, are there, you know, vacant houses in the area, boarded up houses? Um, or are there, uh, you know, things that look more promising? And um, this is kind of a, it's just a good way to be able to check out a neighborhood. Now, there are definitely drawbacks to Google Maps. Um, there, you know, it's sometimes the photos and the images are, are out of date. Maybe it's a couple years old. They, they try to update it on a regular basis, but you can get a good idea, at least a good feel for what that area is like. Um, and nearby services as well. Go down the street, uh, go around the corner. You know, was there a check cashing building there or is there a, uh, you know, a, a nice restaurant or something else, uh, maybe a nice uh, little uh, business center where there's a grocery store and some other things. Um, so uh, it, it is a real helpful way to get to know your neighborhood. So Google mapping for dollars. If you haven't done it, just do it for fun. You can just uh, cruise down a neighborhood and check it out and, and find out all kinds of things. Maybe you don't even know about your own neighborhood. So it's kind of cool just to try it out. Well, let's uh, move into our topic, inflation and today's housing market. So uh, this is a biggie. I mean, as as I mentioned a little bit earlier here, just, you know, just going to the gas pump is pretty crazy. Um, uh, just prices are going on. California is ridiculous uh, because they just tack on a lot of other um, expenses. I mean, uh, other taxes and so forth on, on the those that uh, are buying at the pump there. So it's, it's just crazy, but you know, $5 a gallon, um, is not unusual at, at currently as of the date of this recording. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how it is in your neighborhoods, but you know we're seeing inflation not only at the pumps, but we're seeing it in the stores. We're seeing it uh, in all kinds of products out there. So um, it it is an important factor that we really have to look at. But what does it have to do with the housing market? Now, fast rising housing costs uh, have helped to push inflation to a 13 year high. But the way that the government st statisticians track the price of consumer goods may be missing just how explosive home price growth has been in recent months. And this is why I think you need to look at both, um, not only just the housing numbers, but the inflation numbers. Housing costs rose by 0.4% um, April through May, according to the latest edition of the Monthly Consumer Price Index released Thursday by the Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics, compared with last year. Housing prices for renters and homeowners alike were up by 2.2%. Altogether, the rise in housing prices accounted for over a quarter of the overall increase in inflation. So housing prices have a direct impact on inflation numbers. Um, a reflection of how heavily uh, government economists weigh you know, this spending category. But if that 2.2% figure I mentioned earlier seems off base on your own experience of buying or selling a home, it's not a surprise. Not everyone agrees on the rate of house price growth. Uh, other data suggested a much faster pace of home price appreciation and renter growth well in excess of that level. And as you know from other uh, podcasts that I've done on on this particular area and uh, the housing boom that's going on, um, it there definitely are some some you know differing reports. The most recent report from the Case Schiller Home Price Index for March showed that home prices were up more than thirteen percent, the largest rate of growth since two thousand five, and that's huge. Thirteen percent as compared to this two point two number, which really. I mean, it's a big discrepancies, and that's part of the problem with getting good data, is that there are very different reports coming out. So, how does the CPI calculate housing? Firstly, housing units themselves are not included in the CPI market basket. Secondly, rental data to establish how prices are changing are collected every six months. The calculations for most other CPI items are collected monthly or bi-monthly. So you're, you're 
kind of getting delays in certain certain data that, that's coming in. Um, like most other economic series, the CPI views housing units as a capital or investment good and not as consumer items or consumption items, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, spending to purchase and improve houses and other housing units is investment and not consumption even though you know we look at houses thinking oh you know they're not investments um, uh, especially the house we live in right uh, but a rental property would be an investment but that's not how they're viewing it the cost of shelter for renter occupied housing is rent for an owner occupied unit the cost of shelter is the implicit rent that owner occupants would have to pay if they were renting their homes so even if there aren't real rental stats um, it's uh, a, a number that they come up with based on owner occupants and what they think they would be able to charge. The government pollsters ask homeowners if someone were to rent your home today, how much do you think it would rent for monthly, unfurnished and without utilities? So they're kind of re relying on homeowners for that kind of data. Uh, and they ask renters, what is the rental charge to your household for this unit, including any extra charges for garage and parking facilities. Uh, do not include direct payments by local, state, or federal agencies. And what period of time does that this cover? So the, 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 for the most part, the renter has to, uh, if there is a renter there, they have to give you that data. Um, if it's a homeowner that doesn't rent, they have to come up with their calculation. So um, housing, in other words, isn't looked at like other goods. The rate of house price appreciation is akin to inflation, said Mark Fleming, chief economist at Title Insurance Company, First American Financial Services. For a start, housing is a very basic necessity. Demand for shelter doesn't go away. It just moves around, Fleming said. In other words, if the price of airfares uh, skyrocket 7%, as it did uh, over the past month, uh, families could decide against going on that summer getaway. This choice isn't so simple when it comes to housing. As the cost of shelter increases, it can have a cascading effect on extremely low-income renters, according to Andrew Arund, Vice President for Research at the National Low-Income Housing Coalition. Research from Arun's association has shown that more than 9.2 million extremely low-income renters are cost-burdened by their housing, meaning they spent more than a third of their income on shelter-related expenses. Many of these households spent upwards of 50% on housing, leaving little money behind for other purchases. And I'm seeing this in, in some of our rentals as well, uh, where you have people that uh, maybe they're income changed and they're still in the same living in the same place but they're have very little money left to cover um, things like utilities even the alternative for these households would be losing the roof over their heads in recent years this has been the reality of many americans a 2019 study released by the trump administration estimated that more than 500,000 people sleep outdoors each night across the country, while many more couch surf or utilize shelters for unhoused people. Uh, this is, I think, even maybe a little low compared to some of the things that we're seeing more recently. Meanwhile, for people who own their homes, buying a property isn't the same as buying, say, a banana. <laughs> Owning that banana wouldn't benefit you financially in the long run, whereas with a house, you can expect to see its value increase and to profit off of that. So that's why they consider it an asset where Robert Kiyosaki wouldn't necessarily consider your house you're in. But it's, it is an asset if it's earning money, so I get it. But a home isn't a pure investment asset like a stock. It's a mix of both. Uh, home prices can rise both because the actual structure itself may be more, worth more thanks to the rising cost of labor and lumber, but also because people see value in it as a capital investment. As a result, there can be a mismatch in the way economists or government statisticians view rising home prices and what that means to a consumer. In a market environment where prices are rising so quickly to buy a home, the economist would say 
That's the increase in the price of the capital good, according to Robert Dietz, uh, chief economist at the National Association of Home Builders. But to the buyer, it represents a higher cost of living. So people experience inflation vis-a-vis housing differently to most other products, and that makes it a challenging item to measure. Uh, For the typical homeowner, their housing costs likely haven't changed too much over the past year. According to Fleming, if you have a fixed mortgage on your home year after year, how much does your cost of living in that home change? Not very much. The only things that change year over year are your escrows for taxes and insurance. So even with renters, the price of housing doesn't shift higher or lower from month to month. That's why the Bureau of Labor Statistics collects housing data more infrequently than most other items in the CPI basket of goods. For renters and buyers, you encounter the changing costs when something about your living arrangement changed, when you move to a new home, sign a new lease, or refinance your mortgage. But Americans do need to know more about housing costs if... I'll try it again. But Americans do need to know much. Uh, let's try again. But Americans do need to know how much housing costs are rising or falling. Not the least of which, because residential real estate makes up a huge portion of the nation's economy. The government's consumer price index calculates the imputed rent, essentially the amount a homeowner is paying for their housing rather than paying a landlord. Um, and if you know, I mentioned that earlier, that they're you know relying on the homeowner to come up with the numbers, um, whereas I think there's other data that they could be tapping into to get that. Um, if it did not do so, okay, GDP would actually fall, uh, according to Dietz, uh, because money that would be a rental payment in the marketplace paid by a renter suddenly disappears. To bridge this challenge, the government relies on survey data to produce its estimates of housing costs for renters and homeowners. In renters' cases, they are simply asked how much they pay for housing. But owners aren't asked what their mortgage payment is. After all, not everyone has a mortgage. Instead, that's why they are asked to estimate how much they would be able to charge for rent to lease out their current home. So that's why you're getting these really differing numbers that are coming up uh, in terms of what really is happening in the housing market. Government statisticians survey the same group of Americans periodically to produce their findings and track changes over time to estimate housing costs. Inflation and changes in housing prices have generally been matched up, according to Jonathan Needle, President and Chief Investment Officer of KMIC, a private real estate investment company. He added that rising housing prices has exceeded inflation in some circumstances. Some researchers have argued, however, that this approach can also understate and or be slow to identify true inflation occurring in the housing market, as you see with the great discrepancies of 2.2 to uh, 14 or 16 percent. A new analysis from Fannie Mae showed that there is typically a lag between when home prices are actually rising and when that price growth is reflected in inflation reports like the Consumer Price Index. The shifts in housing preferences and needs caused by COVID-19 has also complicated uh, their ability to gauge the effect of inflation in the housing market, whether Americans, many of whom suddenly find themselves um, able to work remotely, chose to move away from major cities into larger and cheaper homes in the suburbs, often saving money in the process. As a result, rental rates declined in pricier neighborhoods. But in most affordable areas, rents actually increased. Americans who lost their jobs because of the pandemic rushed to find cheaper housing, pushing rents higher for the least expensive apartments and homes in the suburbs. Those effects are beginning to dissipate, but will continue to weigh on official measure like the Consumer Price Index, giving the time lags that occur. So is housing quickly becoming more expensive? The answer, economists agree, is yes. First American First Services has its own measure, the Real House 
price index, they call it, which compares nominal price gains with Americans' ability to afford to purchase a property based on the prevailing interest rates and household income. For a period of time between 2018 and the beginning of 2020, the real house price index was falling because Americans' buying power was rising faster than home prices, Fleming says. That's not the case anymore. Deflation has turned into inflation, not because interest rates have gone up. They've only gone up a tiny bit, but because housing prices are just crazy. Uh, The reason home prices are rising so fast is fairly simple. After the Great Recession, home building activity all but drew to a standstill as the construction industry worked to recover. As a result, the construction of new homes did not keep pace with population growth and the formation of new households. That left the housing market with a serious shortage of homes. Just as millennials have been getting married and having kids, traditional hallmarks of home buying interest. With the pandemic, the shift to remote working and low interest rates have only exacerbated things. The primary solution to address runaway inflation in housing will be to build more homes, something that's easier said than done. Some of the challenges that uh, we're faced with on that side is the supply side. The cost right now of construction and is just crazy right now. Those challenges run the gamut from the high cost of lumber to the lack of skilled workers to complete construction projects. Another factor, zoning regulations across the country prevent the construction of more uh, dense housing in many cities, effectively driving up home prices and rents in the process. Finally, new home construction alone won't make matters easier for all Americans. Because of the high costs, it's easier for builders to construct more expensive homes, even though the demand and competition is strongest for entry-level properties. Over time, that increased concentration in the bottom tier of the housing market is driving up prices for those who who least afford it. Uh, According to Arand, um, there's an argument that if you just build more supply to meet the demand, it will eventually help extremely low and very low income renters. But the market is not going to adequately serve most that that extremely low income renter it's just not so i think that you know what we're going to be seeing and watching as other costs go up they're going to greatly impact a person's ability to be able to purchase a home Um, you know let alone you know be able to support themselves once they're in that home and their other expenses what you're seeing is an increase in uh, other areas such as credit cards uh, are being used more to make up the difference because the uh, you know the inflation numbers are are smashing anybody's budget that they have to go with. So they need to get money from somewhere. So you're going to see this increase in personal debt that's going to, to you know, very likely could go skyrocketing. And that's going to impact a lot of people's ability to purchase homes, which in the long run here could impact the prices of homes overall. And we'll, you'll start to see a decline in uh, in home prices. So we're going to keep our eyes on it, but uh, I think that there's definitely a, a lot to swallow there. And uh, hopefully that information is of some value to you. That is it for today. Please note uh, everything I mentioned today will be outlined in our extensive show notes at olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash log. And you're going to look for the episode entitled Inflation in Today's Housing Market. So remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Until next time, keep moving forward and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.